my name's Ashley Kells. I work for a company called Intelligent Energy. You might be familiar with us, you might not. We're a fuel cell engineering and manufacturing company based in the Midlands in UK. Uh, we were formed in 2001 as um, initially as a sort of spin out from Loughborough University with some financial backing. Um, we're now in private ownership and we've got around about sort of 170, 180 employees at the moment. Got a range of products from uh, stationary power, portable power, sort of thing you might see on a construction site, um, powering some of the lights that you see on, on building sites and construction and so on and so forth, uh, based on fuel cell technology. So, uh, so zero emissions from that perspective. We also uh, develop and manufacture and sell uh, power units for UAVs, drones, uh, for inspection and so on and so forth. And we also have higher power fuel cell uh, technology for automotive, um, aerospace in particular. And I'll sort of focus more on that area today, just to follow on from, from Simon and fit with, the, uh, fit with the theme a little bit. So in terms of a fuel cell. I'll kind of go right back to basics. I'm not an electrochemist, so I won't go into into that level of detail. But um, just going back to it, so a fuel cell is a electrochemical device that converts the energy that's carried in hydrogen into electricity and water, and there is a byproduct of uh, of of heat with that. And um, the fuel cell itself is made up of individual cells, as you might imagine. Um, typically there's a metallic uh, substrate with some other kind of clever bits around it in terms of a membrane, some electrodes and some gas diffusion that creates a cell. They're sandwiched together to then create a stack. And then around the stack, we add balance of plant to create a fuel cell system. And it's that fuel cell system as a whole that converts that, that, that energy, if you like, in the hydrogen into, into electricity. So one of the things that kind of often happens is fuel cells get compared to batteries. Um, and just one thing to kind of mention um, early on, it might might help some people. It might you might kind of already know this, or it might be obvious. But one of the main one of the differences between a fuel cell and a battery is that a battery's got both power and energy limits within the same hardware. So we talk about watt hours or what's in the sort of in the same context with a battery with a fuel cell the fuel cell itself actually only generates power it doesn't have any energy in it it's got potential energy if you drop it on your foot but not in terms of um developing uh, electrical energy so what the fuel cell does is it actually converts the energy as i mentioned from the hydrogen that hydrogen is stored in um in a in a separate vessel so one of the things that we we, we kind of quite often get is that question is well how many how many what hours is your fuel cell how many what hours is your fuel cell and it's one of those things that's quite interesting as we're starting to see people move across and people have, have, have done work on batteries typically but it's part of that education is to understand the difference between the storage and the actual power conversion but it's really good news because we are seeing i think you know based on just following on from from what simon said you know as a fuel cell as a fuel cell organization we are seeing that 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 big increase in demand and that interest in the technology and we are seeing people from you know end users whether that be um bus operators or truck fleet operators and so on and so forth who are, who are who are coming to us and um and are very keen on uh on on pursuing with uh, with fuel cell technology so this is one of the things that, that we quite often get asked and it's 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 quite interesting so from intelligent energy's perspective we really just work on the fuel cell itself We've got partners in the other areas to kind of help us along and um where this i don't know whether where the chicken or the egg um but that's the bit that we'll focus on so what i'll what i'll talk about for the next sort of few um next five minutes or so is just around a couple of projects that we've got um underway to show you where we're where we're heading with our technology and as i say i'll i'll, I'll focus it on the on the higher power side so we're actually in the process and in a in a collaborative project of developing a high power unit based on our some of our previous knowledge, which has got a, a kind of common architecture. So it's got a common cell architecture. And the fuel cell itself is, is inside this kind of waffle topped box here and here. And we've actually got a 
we've developed a common cell which works across a, a heavy duty market so truck and bus off highway and so on and so forth um, and can also cover the, the the passenger car market as well now what we also try and do is maximize the 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 balance of plant between the two as well so the pumps and um, valves and electronics and so on and so forth so we can see some of these economies of scale benefits there are sometimes some differences between the two because of the different duty cycles as you'd imagine but as a whole that's one of the things that that where we're working towards so as i mentioned this is this is typically something that you might see for a uh, a heavy duty truck or bus application you can see it here on, on a on the side of a truck you might have one or two of these devices and then just shown on here just so you can kind of see the difference between the two bits this is this is what the, the hydrogen storage might look like i think simon had a very similar a very similar image um, image beforehand Typically, uh, on a truck, this is where they're installed, sort of underneath a cab or on the chassis or, or whatever. When you come to a passenger vehicle or a, a sort of transit a sprinter type van, that sort of size, um, like commercial vehicle, they tend to be installed more under the under the bonnet. Maybe you've got a motor and um, and drive underneath. So there's slight differences in the packaging, but as I mentioned in this project, it's all about trying to commonize the commonize the components to um, to 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 really minimize the cost and bring us down that cost curve. One of the big areas though that we're, that we're focusing on is about improving the supply chain, UK supply chain to enable us to scale these um, and also to, to develop intelligent energy as a company to be a, a tier one uh, supplier. So one of the things that we're, uh, we're well underway with and on track to deliver against is to achieve um, say IATF 16949 compliance. So to have all the processes in place to enable us to deliver as a true, as a true tier one supplier. Another area, so that's kind of our automotive side, if you like, but um, as a bit of a segue and a bit of a kind of, um, uh, link through into into Chris's presentation um, that we'll hear in in a few few minutes. We're actually also working on on aerospace, and this is we're seeing again real massive demand from the aircraft industry um, for all sorts of things for kind of APUs uh, through to to propulsion. And we're involved in a in a UK project. This is actually. Um, funded via Innovate UK and um, and the ATI, which is the, the aerospace equivalent of, of the APC, um, with GKN Aerospace as a, as a lead partner. What we're looking to do is develop a zero emission hydrogen fuel cell propulsion system for aircraft. And as I mentioned, it could be it could be used also for an APU and also for for sort of sub-regional flights and and so on and so forth. Um, so a real big area there. And as you, as you can kind of see on the on the image that's on the screen, uh, we could see entry into service from um, as early as 2026 on this one. And you'll kind of hear a lot more. There's a lot of activity in this in this area. I think from IE's perspective, we first started working on in the aero market um, when I first started at IE, really back in sort of early 2000s, and um, and we were involved in the first the first manned uh, aircraft flight with with Boeing, which I think was in 2006 2007 type area. So we're building on that heritage, and um, as I say, there's really a lot of really really a lot of impetus behind this at the moment, which is making it really um, really really exciting. And again, the sort of common theme with this is about trying to make it UK. You can see there 100% system. Uh, UK system content. It's all about building that capability in in, in UK, and like I can say Chris will Chris will follow up with a bit more about how that's happening from his side as well. So one thing with this is it does use the auto as a as a kind of common foundation, and then builds from there. So we look at the requirements for aero, and again try and commonize some of the some of the components. And one of the benefits of this is that typically for things that fly, they need to be light um, and and smaller as well so some of that economy of scale and some of that development could feed back and enable us to actually increase the market potential for fuel cells down to smaller vehicles and again as simon mentioned there are certain use cases where that becomes really quite attractive so the two are kind of quite interlocked and that's how we, we, we look at them um, both in that uh, in that in that series so just to kind of finish off really it's been a kind of whistle stop tour i think in terms of IE's products and kind of what we do and so on and so forth. But again, just following on from Simon and from what we're seeing as, a, as an organization, we're seeing a huge potential for fuel cells um, on, the, on, the, uh, on the higher power side and also on our lower power side. And one thing that we, we want to do at Intelligent Energy is to uh, 
develop a, a, a factory that we can manufacture at scale, so a fuel cell um, gigafactory. So it's really quite an exciting time for us as we're as we're looking at options for this, and um, and hopefully it's something that we will we will be able to achieve, and we'll sort of see uh, in the in the not too distant distant future, and we'll be able to supply that that demand that we talked about. So I think kind of my sum up just to finish is. You know, whether we're the chicken or the egg, I'm not sure, but certainly from intelligent energy's perspective, if, uh, developing fuel cell product as consumers for hydrogen, we're there, we're ready to push the button. And as I say, we really want to build this factory and, um, and manufacture fuel cells at scale.